good morning. So it, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to uh, say a few words to thank uh, Joseph Bernstein for all his influence in my own works and of my collaborators, even in, uh, especially in the last few, few years, and also for my, uh, some of them, my students. So it is a pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Denis Getzgoli from Harvard University, who will talk about uh, Getzmudi algebra, quantum groups who have visited. Thank you. Well, it's a very happy occasion. And it's particularly heartwarming to see how things progress. So the previous anniversary, it was Sasha Bravan and myself who organized this conference, and now it's these guys. Back then, they were kids, and now they're who? <laughs> uh, and then I can see the next generation of students. All right, so let me confess that I don't really know what a quantum group is. Uh, but I've been kind of obsessed with it for forever. So it's so what I'm going to talk about is closely related to things we discussed, well, that were discussed in Joseph's seminar when Sasha Braverman and I started 25 years ago, something like that, and it's still kind of in my mind. So, and I'm not sure how much of what I'll say is new, although at the end of, I'll propose a conjecture which I, I think is new, or I think is not known. Anyways, so let me introduce some notation. So G is, let's say, semi-simple group over a ground field of characteristic zero for now. And um, so <coughs> let me denote by lambda the co-weight lattice. So this annotation, this will be the weight lattice, it's dual. <coughs> so we start on the Katsumudi side, so we start with the datum of the level. And so that's a pairing. <coughs> well, I'll call it kappa. It's invariant with, with respect to the, to the vial group, so you can extend scalars and think of it as a pairing of the, uh, as a symmetric. I'm sorry, these lattices sit in what, what space? Pardon? What, what, what space are your lattices? In no space. No, no, I, I'll take your space over what field? This? Or which? Oh, I'm asking, is, is it Bill asking the question? Oh, yes. Uh, so, so it's a, oh, it's abstract, it's a co-weight lattice of my, of my group. It's a lattice, it's over Z, yes. And this T is the carton, is, is what happens if you tensor this lattice over Z with, with your field. So, so we have the symmetric form, well, there's a piece of data equivalent, and then, so because my form was assumed to be W invariant, I can extend it to an in invariant form on G itself. But when I do this, I apply what's called the critical shift, namely I add uh, minus one half of the killing form. It's kind of a convenient way to normalize things. So, so this kappa is a condition structure or it's uh, given by the, by the group structure? Being an older brother, I'll not answer a question. And I'll and I'll I'll punish you if you if you if you disturb my talk too much. <laughs> what was the question? I don't know. <laughs> it's not the question I want to answer. It's it's, it's, it's just misbehaving. Uh, sorry. No, sorry. It, it, sorry. Like the question you asked was, is not relevant. So just cap is given as a form. It's an additional piece of data. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said that. Um, all right. Okay, so, um, okay, to this data, you attach a Katsumudi extension. So, 
So it's the extension of the loop algebra by a copy of k. And so as a vector space, it's split. And um, uh, the Lie algebra structure is given by a well-known formula that involves this kappa and, and the residue, uh, taking res residues here. All right. So this is your Katsumuda extension. And so you consider uh, the category of modules for this. So one has to be a little bit careful. So what, let me just, for people who haven't seen this stuff, let me say what these are. So these are vector spaces equipped with action, with an action of this as a Lie algebra. And so there are two conditions. So one that one is that so the element one inside K acts as identity. This expresses the, the fact that we are at level kappa. And the second condition is continuity. So this piece has a topology. And so you want to attack continuously where your vector space is discrete. So, all right. So this category is huge. Let me also say that, so in this way I defined the abelian category. And well, in modern mathematics you want to work with derived categories or even with DG categories. And it becomes not completely straightforward because in general, when you want to create something derived, it doesn't interact very well with this topological condition. So you have to work to set up the theory correctly. Fortunately, it has been done. And so, and it turns out that the, the, the kind of the right derived category is the derived category of the abelian category. So you can put your mind to peace. Okay. so. In addition with this, we consider two versions of, well, what you can call Harish Chandra modules with respect to two uh, groups. So one, so let me write, write this. So the two versions, one, I'll put the superscript I, I stands for Iwahori. So So these are just Harish Chandra modules for this pair. So okay, let me write, write inclusion. It's a forgetful functor. And the second one is the subgroup is the group of arcs. So this is again the same as Harish Chandra modules like so. Well, I guess you, you, everybody knows what Harishandra modules are. So mm, I should say that at the, at the abelian level, these maps are fully faithful. You're just you're forgetting the structure. Well, not forgetting the structure, sorry. You're omitting a condition. You're omitting the condition that this group, this group or this group act uh, integrably. However, at the derived level, you're really forgetting structure and this, this things fail to be fully faithful just as it happens with the usual Harish Chandra modules. We consider just GK modules. At the derived level, the forgetful functor is, is, is not fully faithful. So this category has, so I gave it a name. I call it kajdan luster category of G at level kappa. And it was studied by kajdan luster in their series of papers in GEMS in the early 90s. And it, this one was shown to be equivalent to the category of modules of the quantum group. And this is, well, this is the, mm, what I'll revisit today. And the conjecture that I'll propose um, at the end is a quantum group counterpart for this category. So we'll go from the spherical level, so to say, to the Ibahori level. Uh, 
OK, so let me add one more piece of structure that exists here and, well, which did not appear in Karzalusic papers, but it was simultaneously developed by Bellinson and Winfeld um, in their paper on Hitchin. So, so these categories carry uh, additional structure. And so let and it's the following one. So let me write it more generally. So, so let's not let me not specify which group I'm taking. Let's call it H one. H one. So suppose I have just two subgroups inside your loop group. So the claim is that there is a, a functor from the category of D modules. Didn't place it well. So it's D modules on the double quotient. Here I'll take H1 and here I take H2. So, okay, don't be scared at this moment. So here I'm taking D modules on some infinite dimensional gadget. And moreover, these D modules are twisted by kappa. This will appear, it was, this will appear in my talk, but only kind of, not marginally, but just I want to mention there is an additional piece of structure. You can jump between Harish-Chandra conditions using D modules. But you can only do it at the derived level. So. I should put derived categories everywhere. Kind of some symmetry that uh, is present in the story. Okay, so this is, well, this is the Katsumudi side. Now let me talk about the quantum group side. So, well, I'm slightly scared because of George's present here, so I hope I won't say anything stupid. So, so for the quantum group, you start with the following kind of data. You start with a quadratic form, but on the weight lattice with values in, in k star. So in fact, you, you have to, to do things canonically. You have to start with a tiny bit more data. So in fact, you have to start with a bilinear form, not necessarily symmetric, which uh, when evaluated on xx gives rise to q. And you have to put one more condition on this q. So one has to pay a little bit of attention. So the first thing that one produces from this Q is a certain braided monoidal category that I'll call rep Q of T. So T is my notation for the Cartan uh, group of G. So this is a braided monoidal category. And so, and it's the following one. So, as a category, it's just the category representations of my torus. So, it's a, it's a vector space is graded by lambda check. As a monoidal category, it's also the same thing. But what changes is the braiding. And I leave it to you as an exercise to see how you can use this quadratic form to twist the braiding on representations of T and get a new braided monoidal category. And when doing so, you will discover that you need a tiny bit more than just the quadratic form. Um, no, I said it's, it's, a, it's a bilinear form that restricts the diagonal to... It's a, quadru it's a, it's a bilinear form B, such as B lambda 1, B lambda 2, plus B lambda 2, B lambda 1 is Q lambda something. Maybe I'm getting confused, sorry. Something. It's, it doesn't have to be symmetric. And, but, so the result will not depend on this additional choice up to non-canonical equivalence. So up to non-canonical equivalence, all things only depend on Q. I wrote it down many times in my papers, but each time I forget. 
All right, so you have this. Now, if you have a monoidal category, you can talk about algebras and co-algebras in this monoidal category. But you have, if you have a braided monoidal category, you can talk about half algebras. So the first thing we do, we'll produce a certain half algebra here. That's, well, in fact, we'll produce two. So it's a half algebra. sitting inside, so, but there are two versions, one, I'll, in fact there are three versions, but I'll only use two. One is Lustig's version, and the other is Katz de Concini version. So, both are defined by, well, both are defined kind of by hand, by generators and relations, and which is not a great news if you want to involve higher category theory, which you, in, in, which you inevitably will want to do, because higher category theory doesn't sit well with things defined by generators and relations. You want things defined by some functorial procedures, but we don't really know how to do it. So, and, well, and when I see these things defined by generators and relations, I stare at them, I don't know what to do with them. So, if you, well, I can give you a hint of how to do it. There is a concise way. If you assume that Q evaluated on um, simple roots um, is not one, it's under this non-generacy condition, you, you do the following. And actually, let, let me assume that this holds for, for the sequel. So first you define Katz de Concini. Um, so you take usual generators, the Chevrolet generators, and you impose what's called the quantum stair relations. And then it turns out that Lustig's version for, in this case, for the negative, is just the linear dual, well, in the graded sense. So in some sense, this guy is easier to define, but this guy is in some sense more fundamental, but you can get it one one from another as, as the Hopf dual. So this is a Hopf algebra. When you dualize it in the graded sense, you get another Hopf algebra. All right. Um, let's see. I'm forgetting something. Okay, so, and you can swap n minus and n plus, and you get uq and plus Lustig. So, So we now define one of our fundamental object of study. I define the category rep Q of B to be the category of modules for this, well, I, I view it as an associative algebra, inside my category of rep QT. So if you think in, when there is no Q, well, you can view your n plus not, well, you can, you can view a universal developing algebra of n, not just an algebra in vector spaces, but in vector spaces graded by the weight lattice, and the category of representations of B is the category of modules within this, this category. But, so, local and impotent. So I want this guy to act locally and importantly. So, so this is one category of interest. Um, and so the most fundamental one is rep Q of G. And unfortunately, I don't really know a good definition. So we can define it at the level of the abelian category and then, and then take the derived category. So, well, these are let me say it, vector spaces. Let me say it like this. So, it's objects of rep Q of T equipped with a structure of U, Q, and plus module that's a locally important, and 
uq and minus module local nil potent plus you impose a condition how the Chevrolet generators here and here interact so they kind of ei should commute with fj this kind of thing so and again this is not good news if you want to do things derivedly because you don't want to deal with generators. But unfortunately, I don't know a better definition. And it, and it presents a problem when you want to prove things in this higher world. So by the way, maybe I can ask George, do, is there any other definition of modules for the quantum group? Apart from just... So, but this is what it is, and maybe that's what makes it interesting because you're trying to prove something about an object which is, whose definition is not really fits into your apparatus. Or, yeah. Well, no, 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 I mean, I, I don't know, it's just notation. It's just, I mean the same, just, and the action is local and important. All right, so now let me state the, the cajdan lustig equivalence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, N, M, N plus. And, but here both, N plus and N minus. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, that makes no sense. T, it, T is just, it, these are things graded by, just graded things. Yeah. So you're going at this from the, trying to find the representation category without just starting with U, Q of G. You know, sort of. S say again? So instead of starting with, uh, no, you, you're using U, Q of M. So I don't. So, well, we may disagree with George. From my point of view, U, UQ of G doesn't really exist. Because I really don't know what to do with the toric part. So instead, I take the toric part just basically in the algebraic sense, just things graded by the lattice, and then I put in plus and minus. So. It's an existential problem. Pardon? It's an existential problem. You don't know what it's going to Well, it exists, of course, but like I don't. This U, Q of G, I don't know what kind of animal it is. I don't know. I just don't know what to do with it. So th this is my kind of aesthetic choice. Correct. But then we become very close to this because, after all, you just impose these weights, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But I'm essentially, I'm essentially doing the U dot. Okay. So now let me state the cardinalistic equivalence as it was stated in, in their papers. So the cardinalistic equivalence is transcendental. So in this case, we take k is equal to c. So um, I, start, I start with this guy, kappa. And let me assume that kappa is non-degenerate. So if it's non-degenerate, so so then it gives rise to uh, kind of the dual form. Let me call it kappa check and. So, because this is a field of characteristic zero, well, specifically C, uh, this symmetric bilinear form comes from a quadratic form. And take Q to be exp 2 pi i of quadratic form corresponding to the step I check. And so, um, the cardinalistic equivalence was stated under the assumption that this kappa is what's called negative. So, yeah. Here? Yes. yes. No, no, no. 
both are half algebra objects in rep q of t. Yes. Um, I'm not sure I understand the questions. So it's, it's an object in this category. Correct. It's a distinguished object. Pro yes. And its properties are what are being captured by the set relation. Well, you can say it, yes. Okay. So spe no, specifically, it, that's what I said on this blackboard. So you impose set relations on the Katz Deconcini version, and the Lustig version is obtained by dualization. Just linear dual. I can what? But one that doesn't know how. Yeah. Say, say again. So I mean, well, you, yeah. I said the EI commutes with FJ and. You, yeah, you impose a certain things also how if EI commutes with FI. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, of course you impose it, I mean, so I just said. Plus, plus more conditions how these two parts interact and you put it in by hand. And so that, that's the point that I don't know how to do it non-artificially. All right, so, and so again, and one adds the assumption that kappa is what's called negative. Okay, I might as well say what it means. Um, so you split your Lie algebra into simple factors. In this case, you can write kappa as uh, a scalar times the killing form. And um, so, yeah, so what, so I, I'm, I may, might get confused, so what you don't want, so negative means that is equivalent to C being not um, inside the set minus one half plus, so you exclu you're excluding these values, that's what negative means, so up to the shift by minus one half, which is this critical shift, you exclude rational, um, positive rational values of C. And let me stick to this <coughs> assumption. One can say things in general, but the story is essentially dual. So let me just keep this assumption. All right. So. The theorem of Kajdan Lustig says the following that that this category, well that I also denoted KL, is equivalent to this category rep Q of G. And so it's an equivalent of equivalence of abelian categories. It's therefore, it's also an equivalence of their derived categories. So let me add, so I want to add one more piece of information of, namely, I want to say which objects, I want to specify a particular set of objects here and say what they go over to on the other side. So these are what's called the vial modules. Oh. Question? No? It's these guys? On the left side, yeah. yeah, it is the spherical part of Hatsmudi representations. Okay. And on the right side is not a dual group or anything? No, so this story doesn't involve Langlands duality okay. for the next 15 minutes. Okay. Because it's what? Uh, is it, is it where? Yeah. This, here? Yes, so it's all, all of these mean the same thing. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I mean. 
Pardon? It is spherical. I mean, it's, I'm imposing equi equivariance with respect to this guy. So it, you're, you're okay to call it spherical. All right. So what I'll say that is, uh, is under this equivalent, something that I'll define as vial modules, will correspond to something that I'll define as vial modules here. Well, lambda is a, a dominant weight. And then I'll say something which might not be so well known. Okay, so let me say who these vial modules are. So it's 10, right? What? Yes. Yeah, okay. Rami, are you okay? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so who are these guys? Well, you can consider the induction functor from up to here, and you induce just the... F so you take the finite dimensional representation with highest weight lambda for, the, for your G, you make it a module over this by just making G of T act modulo T and make the center act trivially, and you induce it up, and this is your vial module for Katsumuri. So this is easy. So maybe on the same occasion I'll introduce Verma modules, equally easy. So this is the Verma module with highest weight uh, lambda. So this guy lives here. It's, inter it's Harish Chandra module with respect to the maximal compact. And this guy is Iwahori. And I will not introduce dual, vi dual Verma modules in this way because they're not induced from dual Verma modules. Instead, you have to apply contragradient duality already in this category directly. All right, so these are the vial modules. Now, for the Katsumuri side, now let me introduce vial modules on the quantum group side. So, so we have this category rep Q of G. We have the category rep Q of B, and there is a natural restriction functor, and it has a left and a right adjoint. So this is co-induction. This is induction. And so this, um, the vial module for the quantum group is the induction, is the left adjoint. So from rep Q of B to rep Q of G of the one-dimensional representation corresponding to character lambda. So, before we proceed further, and kind of to motivate the conjecture that I'll state later, I want to ask the following question, to which I don't know if the answer has been known. So, note that here I specified, I required that lambda be dominant. But, well, this adjunction makes sense also in the derived category, and one can define kind of generalized vial modules by this, by this formula for any lambda. The only thing that you'll, you'll be in the derived category, and so this makes sense even when Q equals 1 for usual groups, so basically it's the bot bot borel bay theorem, take all of lambda for lambda not necessarily dominant in the Plague variety, take its derived global sections, and we know what you'll get. It'll be If lambda is anti-dominant, it will be live in cohomological dimension equal to the dimension of the flag variety, and it will be also the reducible module. So for the, for the quantum group, well, when a lambda is anti-dominant, I think you also know what you'll get. It will be what's called the dual vial module. But you can ask this in general, and you can ask the following question. 
these vial modules for lambda, for any lambda, what do they correspond to on the on the Katsmudi side? So maybe I should ask George, is, is that known? So, so let me give the answer. And to give this answer, we'll have to, well, go back to what I this hacky action. So, So this is the weight lattice. Lambda check is the weight lattice. Ah. It's my notation. Yes, I think you, you this <coughs> so we'll see in a second. So I'll give the answer. So this is actually a theorem, but okay. So remember we have this Hecke action. So implicitly when I write here I mean the derived category. So, you can act by the category of D modules on and so, so you can think of them in two different ways equivalently, either it's Iwahori equivariant D modules on the affine Grassmannian or G of T equivariant D modules on the fine flag variety. But I'm going to use a very particular one. So namely, I want to use the well, kind of the delta function on G of T inside the flag variety. So if you wish, this is a functor of averaging. So kind of a particular case of this construction is the functor of averaging. It goes from the category of Iwah Iwahori, Harishandra modules with respect to Iwahori, to Harishandra modules with respect to GFO. So your module was only equivariant with respect to Iwahori. You can force it to be equivariant with respect to GFO by applying certain procedure. In fact, this is not a big mystery. This procedure is the left adjoint to um, the forgetful functor. So, and what will happen is that these guys, and again, this makes, so this averaging procedure is not an exact functor, so it kicks you out of the abelian category. So these guys are obtained exactly by this averaging procedure, but applied to what? And here comes a little surprise. So you apply it to modules that are not as elementary as the ones I've introduced here. The, these are called the, so the Wakimoto modules. So, and they are interesting modules introduced initially by Fagan and Frankel many years ago. So, let me give you a sense of who they are. Wakimoto module with high, highest weight lambda. So let me describe to you who they are. So let, we'll consider two different cases. So, so case one is when our kappa is irrational. So which means that on every simple factor of your same as simple algebra, it's an irrational multiple of the, um, of the killing form. On the quantum group side, it means that you are away from roots of unity. So in this case, this is in some sense the dull case, although I don't consider it dull. So in this case, they are the same as Verma modules. But now let's consider the case when, yeah, and by the way, they behave drastically differently at positive and negative level. So now let's assume that kappa is negative, is, is our running assumption. And I'll, I'll tell you what they are. 
so let's say negative rational. Um, so it's a kind of funny story. So Pardon me? No, negative implied, I'm, I, I excluded only positive rational values. So, so negative meant not equal. Yes. So here, case two, I mean, I, I'm, I'm specifically at a rational negative level. So it's kind of a funny answer. So let me denote by lambda sharp the subset of elements of lambda such that kappa of lambda mu is integral for every mu in lambda. It's, well, for people working in the metaplectic theory, this is the, the, this is the weight lattice for the meta metaplectic dual. So the point is that, is pardon? Lambda. lambda. Uh, who's asking the question? Yeah, it's co-weight. So now the point is that for every lambda in lambda, this lambda sharp, you can attach a very particular object, let me lambda sharp, let me say dominant, let me call it J lambda shriek. It's a very particular object in the category of D modules. Well, twisted by kappa. All this double quotient. So Roman has used these objects extensively in the non-twisted case. The point is that they only exist for lambda in this sublattice, in this sublattice sharp. Okay, so now I'm saying this in order to define this Vakimoto modules. So now what you do is this. You Sorry, let me call it m mu. So now you start with arbitrary lambda and you write it as follows. You can write it many different ways. I'll write it lambda 1 minus mu, where lambda 1 is dominant and mu is sharp dominant. And There are many ways to write it. Namely, you can add to both sides another element, mu prime, which is in sharp dominant. And now, so here is the definition of the Vakimoto module. So this Vakimoto lambda is obtained as follows. You are taking the Verma module with highest weight lambda 1, and then you're applying, again, this Hecke action, but you're going from Iwahori to Iwahori using the D module, namely this one. So using... Actually, let me say like this, there are, there are two objects you can attach. So this one, actually, for some reason I pointed to the wrong one. So there is a, you can attach something that I call it this, the star extension from the corresponding orbit. And you're, you're applying this, this functor is called convolution. So I'm starting with Verma, and then I'm applying this kind of translation and so this is my Wakimoto module. And it's, one can deduce from properties of these objects that it's really independent of the way I represent. So it may be kind of fancy, um, well, assertion. I mean, these are kind of remarkable objects that are not easily expressible in terms of finding dimensional algebra. So these Wakimoto modules, and then they admit also a different characterization. But the point is that, um, if you average them, you get exactly this um, vial modules on the quantum group side. All right. So, 
So, and now, I, so I want to, the last 15 minutes, I'll talk about kind of a generalization of this. Yes, but, uh, yeah. And this is correct. I mean, it depends only on the chamber. Correct. Absolutely right. But from your definition, it's not so clear. It's, a, it's pretty, pretty clear. You can. So. Well, it's irrational. No, 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 no. So, so there is there's a disjoint cases. So you see, in the irrational case, this lambda sharp is zero. So, kind of, there are very, in fact. Well, mu is just zero, then, and then it's just. No, no, but this definition is invalid. Oh, okay, you can. I, d I don't want to, m like the, the two cases are separate, let's keep them separate. So it's true that the behavior at various levels of values of the level, the behaviors are very different of the categories. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about this if you want. Yeah. I'd be happy to. But I mean, I think what I'm saying is much more elementary than what you want. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Yeah. Could you just sort of use about weight versus co weight? On the left board, it's, it's in the weight lattice, and on the right board, it's in the co weight lattice, or it's lambda. And it's, they're supposed to be the same lambda, right? And you're actually right. So, okay. My apologies. Okay, look at these guys. This is a this sub lattice in lambda. However, kappa, let me call it mu. Should keep the notations. So, kappa of such a mu against anything by this condition is a, is a weight. So, this definition tells you that lambda check, not only is it a subset of lambda, it's also a subset of lambda check by this formula. And it, it's in this way that I'm viewing mu as an element of the weight lattice. So thank you very much for your question because it's really, it was a slip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so here is a conjecture, kind of Karsden Lustig Ivahori version. So, so is equivalent to what? So that's the conjecture. So now I'll I'll explain what the question mark is. Okay. So let me say it right away. So my notation for this. So I didn't invent a good notation for this. Let me call it UQG mixed. So we'll go back to the definition of modulus of the quantum group. But unlike the previous case, this one will have kind of a definition which is amenable to, more amenable to kind of, to, form, to formula free description. So it'll be the following guys. So these are objects. Yeah. Yes. Does it work when kappa is zero? Um, you mean zero, zero? 
So zero is, zero is critical. At its critical level, everything blows up. So. No, I mean, so the, the equivalence with the quantum group, just critical level is kind of off the charts. So it's objects of rep Q of T <coughs> equipped with an action of, so on the one hand, you, you keep U Q of N plus Lustig as it was, but instead of u, q, n minus lustig, you use the cuts the continue version. So it's kind of mixed version where the plus part is lustig and minus part is cuts the continue, plus also relations. The good news, however, is that this is, as I said, it's a category that can be described much more explicitly as follows. So, well, remember that this was So this was a Hopf algebra, so we consider UQ B plus. This is a monoidal category. And moreover, so this is a monoidal category. Rep QT was a braided monoidal category, and by the very construction, this braided monoidal category maps to what's called the Drinfield center of this monoidal category. In these circumstances, you can take what's called the relative Drinfield center. You can take uh, let me say it, and then I'll... It's a <coughs> so, if you wish, this is the definition. So, so, I don't want to write too many formulas on the blackboard, so maybe for people who are curious can ask me later. Let me just say it like this, that if you have a monoidal category with a braided monoidal category acting on it, in this circum... Well, to monoidal category, you can attach the Drinfield center, but you can do it in a relative situation where you're equipped with an a priori action of some braided monoidal category, and that the result is another braided monoidal category. It's called the relative Drinfield center. And this category of interest is exactly that. So and if you unwind the definitions, well, if you have a Hopf algebra present, it will say that you, you're dealing with modules for this Hopf algebra, which is also are equipped with a co-action of the same Hopf algebra. Here we're using the fact that the two guys are just duals of each other. So this, uh, this appears not randomly, it just appears as a dual of this one. And the conjecture says that... in a way compatible with this conjecture, namely with this equivalence. So there's the forgetful functor that goes like so, just you're forgetting from a bigger group to a smaller group. And here, rep Q G, there's also the for um, there's also the forgetful functor that has to do with the fact that the cut the continue version maps to the lustig version. So there is a forgetful functor from this category to this category. So this is the conjecture that I propose, and moreover, let me also say which, what modules goes to what modules goes to what modules. So Wait a second. What's, what's the uh, right vertical arrow? Uh, forgetful map. So you see, the cut the continue version maps to the Lustig's version. So therefore, you can restrict. You have, if you have an action U Q N plus Lustig, you can U Q N minus Lustig. You can restrict and get the action U Q N plus Lustig U Q N minus De Concini. So this new that got like you know, the power that the center will end by zero. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And if time remains, I'll give you the coherent picture for this, where that becomes explicit. Yes. So. Um, So, so in here, 
well, we have the forgetful functor as before, and has a left adjoint, so induction. So let me say that inside here there are induced modules. Let me say UQG plus mixed. Here it'll be rep QB of characters. And under this equivalence, these guys will go specifically to Wakimoto modules. So before we only saw the averagings of these Wakimoto modules, but now they appear as they are. So they correspond to these particular guys. It's part of the conjecture. All right, so. Pardon me? Yes, so. But not this part. Yes, uh, thank you for saying this. So unlike this equivalence, this preserved the hearts. This was T exact. This is no longer T exact. So this is, to do this, you have to be in the derived category, which is maybe part of the reason that, it, that I hadn't seen it formulated before, because people were reluctant to work with inherently derived stuff. So yeah, this, this equivalence does not preserve the T structures. Which are gay? Which which functors? I'm joking. Uh, I know which are gay. Uh, it's in, not no. All right. So, but I forgot what I wanted to say. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So the two things that I wanted to add about this equivalence. So. Uh, so, this conjecture implies the following one, it, which is. So, just I wanted to add two more things. So, there are very particular functors that I want to describe on both sides that correspond to each other under this equivalence. So, on the left-hand side, again, so this is, I'm going slightly less elementary than the previous part of the talk. So, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's a conjecture. I don't think it's very... Far. I mean, so I don't think it's very difficult, but it's a conjecture. I don't have a proof. Is it KL conjecture or your conjecture? No, it's... Well, I made this conjecture. I'm not aware of people making it before. Although this surprises me because it involves object that had existed for 25 years. What KL means? It's, it's a joke. I mean, that was the theory of KL and the KL with the Wahori level. Um, you know what, so these, so let me say what these two things are, and maybe we'll declare the talk over and I'll mention them for people who want. So one thing is, is this, that on this side there's a functor of semi-infinite cohomology, and I've always been, well, you can do it here, you can restrict it to this category, it, it, I've, I've always been puzzled of what the semi-infinite cohomology, how to translate it to the quantum group side, and all of this was actually grew out of an attempt to describe it. So this is one thing that I can say. And another thing is that, so when cap is integral, well, Roman has a description of this category, rather it's what's called the principal block, um, in terms of coherent sheaves on the, on the Steinberg variety of the Langlands dual group, and I wanted to say how that description, how it matches with this conjecture. So you can, you can see that things match indeed really well with, with this version of the quantum group. But let me not impose this on people, let me be... And then. Yes, thank you for this question. So I, okay, so and then, all right. It's a very good question. So again, do we want to keep people for this? We can, I, I want to answer this question and I will, but maybe let's release everybody and we'll. 
Yes. So, okay, if you look at Iwahori, Iwahori inherently doesn't factorize. But, so uh, due to the theorem of Sam, you can replace Iwahori by another Harichana type condition. It's condition of equivariance with respect to loops into n times, well, n of k t of o, and then the left hand side factorizes, and then the conjecture would be that it's actually a factorizable equivalence. So, again, like in Kajdan Lustig, we are comparing apples and oranges. Here we're dealing with factorizable categories. Here we're dealing with braided monoidal, and you compare them via Riemann Hilbert, but again, so in the same way as the original Kajdan Lustig is factorizable, the same this is factorizable.